Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focusing on the S&P 500. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll be here helping you navigate through this crazy market every step of the way. Now we're going to begin with a quick recap of what's been happening on the S&P 500 chart. And then we're going to take a look at a couple other charts that are maybe giving us hints as to what is going to be happening over the next few trading sessions. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the general picture is still the same on the S&P 500. We have this huge break of the long term price channel on the S&P 500. We were watching that breakout. We expected that move to run out of steam, correct and come back for the back test. That's what happened. We got a successful back test confirming that this is in fact very strong support, although we already knew that because it just has so many reactions throughout history. I mean, this is a trend line that goes back a decade and we're currently within this new little price channel right there. And our original thesis was that we would break out here with a very strong move. That's what happened. And then stay above this price channel with some volatility uh, for a few weeks while we see the S&P 500 consolidate its gains from this large rally we had since that vaccine news on November 9th. And we're not just saying that randomly. That is something that tends to happen once you break out above a level. You can have a period of consolidation above that level before resuming that rally. I can take a look at the Nasdaq 100 during the dot com bubble. We had a very, very similar chart. We've already shown this chart a few times on this channel. We had this price channel that was quite well respected throughout the 1990s with quite a few reactions all the way through, right? Capturing all these highs right here and all these lows. I'm just sketching it right here. It's not very clean, but this is just to give you an idea. We had that huge move in tech in 1998 here, broke out above this channel then we saw a period of consolidation for months before eventually getting that final move up. So not sure we're going to see months of sideways consolidation above the price channel. Now in 2021, it could go a lot quicker before we actually break out. But we are looking at a very similar scenario from a technical standpoint on the S&P 500 to what was happening on the Nasdaq 100 in 19. 98 1999 now the slope was clearly steeper here these were larger gains but nevertheless the result is the same this type of move this type of breakout is bullish for at least the intermediate term now long term that's very very debatable that's not necessarily the case and that's why Although stocks can look very, very bullish at one particular moment and returns can be massive throughout a certain time period, that diminishes the expected returns you can have over a longer period of time. So that's why it's very important to keep your portfolio diversified because there's a lot more opportunities than just the stock market. You can go and check out GameOfTrades.net if you're interested in finding out more about those opportunities. But now let's get back to the S&P 500 chart and we're going to jump to a futures chart. So you can see this chart doesn't have any gaps. It takes in the overnight price action as well. So you have a more complete technical picture, but we have the same levels drawn on this is that long term price channel that was broken. And we're currently trading within this price channel, this upwards short term price channel there that was recently tested and confirmed as support uh, right here, right after that correction where we talked about this level of support and the fact that this was a nice buying opportunity. But as I said, right now, we don't have strong convictions on whether we're going to continue grinding within this channel here or whether we're going to start to see a sideways period of consolidation right here and see a little bit more volatility throughout the next couple of weeks before eventually breaking out. And one of the reasons that may happen is in the chart I'm about to show you right here. It's the Nasdaq 100 divided by the S&P 500, right? We've, we've taken a look at this before and it is just crazy how useful this chart is to determine whether you're going to see strong performance on the S&P 500 or not, because it's all about the tech sector. And so if you can figure out where this ratio is going, 
up or down, well, that's going to tell you where the S&P 500 is going. And I can show you what I mean here. I'm going to add the S&P 500 on this chart so that we can compare. And just in this recent underperformance of tech, right, because we saw this ratio between the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 come down over the past few weeks. We've seen the tech sector underperform. Well, throughout these two big leg downs here in February 2021 and in March 2021, both those leg downs corresponded to a leg down in the S&P 500. That was a 4.5% correction right here as the broad market was brought down by the tech sector. And during this leg down, that was a another 4.5% 4, 4 correction as tech brought down the broad market. So what's the next development? That's the question worth asking. And here we can take a look at where this ratio is coming in. It's coming into resistance. You've got both horizontal resistance here, very strong level of resistance and downtrend line resistance, right? I drew this capturing this peak, this peak right here, and we're currently right there just below it. Now, in general, this is a bullish falling wedge, right? This is a bullish pattern. It's a bullish continuation pattern, and that's exactly where we are. We've seen a massive uptrend, then you've got a continuation pattern, and then eventually that's going to break out and you're going to continue to see outperformance unless this pattern fails. But this does tend to be a high probability pattern. So in general, this is bullish for the stock market. And that's where some people are confused that although this is a bullish pattern, you can't be bullish until you actually break to the upside. And right now we're at resistance. So the higher probability scenario right now would be another leg down to come down to this level of support, tag this trend line right there, and then eventually break out. So in that scenario, we'd see a little bit more volatility on the S&P 500 before resuming the big, big rally on the broad market. So we're going to be watching what happens with this ratio, with this wedge pattern. But again, if we break out now, then that significantly increases the odds of seeing more upside right now on the S&P 500. And our ratings for the tech sector and the S&P 500 on our website would flip from, I believe there are hold now to a buy or even potentially strong buy in the short term. And what I'm referring to is these posts right here that we have on our website, Game of Trades ratings across asset classes. And this is where we give you guys our ratings for each index, each asset class. So whether that's the stock market, the tech sector, precious metals, cryptocurrencies. And we give you guys our convictions clearly laid out short term, intermediate term, long term. So intermediate term being more a uh, swing trade time frame. So looking out a few weeks, maybe a few months. And this is all based off technicals and fundamentals. So the longer term convictions are, of course, based off more on fundamental analysis long-term outlooks, what we think is going to happen with inflation, macro trends, and how to position yourself long-term on each asset class. And then for the shorter term, we use our expertise in technical analysis to pinpoint whether it's actually a good risk reward in the short term. This was last week's post. This week's uh, ratings across asset class is going to be posted today. So make sure to go and check that out. So is this a good moment to be buying the S&P 500 short term. Is this place right here a good moment to enter new long positions? And the short answer is actually no, right? It was a good opportunity right there. This is not so much a good opportunity anymore. We're getting closer to this line of resistance. We're actually testing horizontal resistance here, the previous all time high. And we can actually take a look at the put call ratio and this is something that we often take a look at when we need to determine whether we need to take a position on the stock market or not. And throughout 2020 and 2021, it's been working just tremendously. You can see I've highlighted a green zone and a red zone. So very, very simple analysis. And you typically want to be entering the stock market when this ratio is in the green zone, when the put call ratio is elevated. And I can show you the S&P 500 on this chart just so you get an idea. And when you have a spike in the put call ratio, that often corresponds to a 
nice bottom on the S&P 500. That's been the case quite a few times throughout the rally, but we don't really use it as a buy signal. So if you've got good price action, a good technical picture with price at support and the bullish trend still intact with a put call ratio in this green zone, that's a good buying opportunity. So right now, where do we have the put call ratio? It's in the red. So this is typically an area where you don't want to be entering the S&P 500. Right here, the ratio was right at that same level and that was the peak right before that 4% correction. Same thing here, ratio was in the red, that was the peak. Same thing here, the ratio was in the red, that was the peak and so on. Now don't base your entire strategy on this ratio, but consider using it in conjunction with other technicals, other indicators, just like you should consider smashing the like button on this video if you appreciate all the content, information and research that we bring with these videos. I really appreciate the support you guys give to the channel. It helps us grow our community, grow our website, expand and make our service much, much better. Now, the other thing we can take a look at to identify whether this is a buying opportunity, right? Just in case you're not yet convinced is the VIX. So we've taken a look at the VIX a few times over the last few videos, and this is just a great indicator to identify buying opportunities if you can read the chart properly. If you can time these spikes, and again, use that as just one more indicator in your analysis to know whether to buy or not, then you can increase your profitability. That's what we managed to do right here with this spike. We were looking at this price channel for months. We've been looking at this price channel ever since we got these two peaks, and that's what gave us this entire channel. And so as we got that correction on the S&P 500, we saw the VIX was beginning to turn around at that resistance and that was another signal to get in and buy. I don't like going back too much and going through the things that I did or did not say. I think that's counterproductive, but to the many doubters that are present on the internet, you can see we were talking about the VIX being at resistance as the stock market was crashing. So where's the VIX now? Is this a buying opportunity? Not so much right? We're currently actually coming in to support. This is where we reversed the last time around on, on the 16th of April. This is support in terms of volatility. So could we get a little bit of a bounce here in the VIX as we see that tech ratio getting rejected? That's entirely possible. Anything can happen. We could go straight down and break this. But from a probability and a risk management standpoint, this is a less favorable buying opportunity than it was right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, good luck on your trading and see you next time.